Hello everyone, welcome to EduCare 247. This is the first lecture of weekly economy and finance news series and this series is very much useful for upcoming UPSC EPA for 2020 examination. In our first lecture, we are discussing the news from 1st March to 7th March and in this series, we are covering the many important business newspaper like Business Standard, Business Life, Economic Times and Live Mint and this series will help you to solve the question of current affairs in UPSC EPFO 2020. EduCare 247 has started many lecture series on this UPSC EPFO 2020 examination. So you can subscribe to EduCare 247 for further updates. Humanity is going through one of the biggest crises from their existence and at this moment knowledge and science is the only hope. You are also advised to not roam around unnecessarily sit at your home and maintain social distancing while sitting at your home you can easily prepare for UPSC EPFO 2020. EduCare 247 is giving 50% discount on their comprehensive course and this course is very much important for your preparation. Under this course we are covering the detailed syllabus we are providing 10,000 plus MCQs test series will be also there our content are very crisp and concise and live doubt session will be taken care you will get the 1500 discount and the course will be for 1499 so visit our website educare247 and subscribe to this course let us start the discussion of weekly economy and finance news our first news is about consolidation in public sector banks Indian government has announced the merger of public sector banks earlier but recently union cabinet has approved the mega consolidation in public sector bank and it will be effective from 1st April 2020 it is the start of financial year of 2020-21 so in this merger the four new bank will be created basically Oriental Bank of Commerce and United Bank of India will be merged with Punjab National Bank so it will be one large bank Syndicate Bank will be merged with Kendra Bank Andhra Bank and Corporation Bank will be merged with Union Bank of India Allahabad Bank will be merged with Indian Bank and it will be effective from 1st April 2020 now the business of this bank will be over rupees 8 lakh crore so it will be large bank and it will be in our national interest because large bank will provide the financial inclusion easily and the cost of operation will also reduce we'll discuss the benefit of this merger this mega merger will help to create banks with scale comparable to global banks and capable of competing effectively in India and globally so basically it will provide the global scale to our Indian banks the scale and synergy through this merger will lead to cost benefit and it will enable public sector banks to enhance their competitiveness so this is the benefit it also provide impetus to amalgated entities because many banks are in loss so in this case loss will be shared and it will impact less and their loan ticket size will increase so they can lend the larger amount to the different projects and that will boost the overall growth they will share the best practices so new technologies will be implemented across the banks and that will help the digitalization of banks in a greater manner so this is the overall benefits of this merger and this is very very important these days NABARD, RBI and SEBI all are asking the conceptual questions if you have seen this year NABARD paper the benefit type questions had been asked so remember these benefits it can be asked in the examination the next news is about LLP settlement scheme central government has decided to introduce a scheme LLP settlement scheme 2020 it has started from 16 March 2020 and it will remain in force up to 13th June 2020 many LLP companies are not compliant because they are not able to pay the late fee so what government has thought about government has thought about one time condonation so they don't have to pay the fee and they can become a compliant during this period so the LLP can file the pending documents form with the authority and they can gain immunity from 
prosecution for such defaults so they have defaulted earlier now they are being non compliant because they don't want to pay the late fee and they are not capable to pay late fee so central government can condone those llps and they can be compliant from now onwards and earlier thing will be condoned so this is very good scheme to make llps compliant let us understand what is limited liability partnership basically it is a form of company which take benefits of limited liability of company and have flexibility for the partnership so basically it is a hybrid between company and partnership in india there is a law for this kind of liability company and that is limited liability partnership act of 2008 and ministry of corporate affairs implement this act so this kind of company fall under this very important act and it is governed by ministry of corporate affairs so this is very important concept this can be asked in the examination in any form the next news is about direct overseas listing of indian firms recently union cabinet has approved a proposal to allow direct listing of indian companies overseas for that section 23 of companies act would be amended and it will permit foreign listing of indian corporates so it will be easy for indian companies to do business globally and they can register themselves easily with the help of foreign stock exchange currently there are very few companies with american depository receipts and global depository receipts with the help of these receipts they do business globally it will expand their business activities and it will boost to get more fund so it will overall increase the business cycle of the company the roll out of the scheme with this regard might take few month it will be not implemented immediately because for that we have to amend the companies act but the proposal has been accepted it means good days are coming so it is very very important scheme keep this in your mind the next news is about direct tax vivad se vishwas bill 2020 recently lok sabha has passed the direct tax vivad se vishwas bill 2020 to provide a mechanism for the resolution of pending tax disputes related to income tax and corporate tax so basically any individual or company who are in the dispute so this bill will help them to resolve their dispute easily under this bill appellant and appellant forum has been defined so basically income tax authority or a person or a both whose appeal is pending before any appellate forum as on january 31st 2020 will be called as appellant and appellant forum is like supreme court high court income tax appellate tribunal or commissioner so these are the forum and the person or the income tax authority whose dispute is pending they are called appellant and what is the resolution mechanism in this an appellant can file a declaration to the designated authority to initiate resolution pending related to direct tax dispute and principal chief commissioner will be designated an officer and their rank will be not below the commissioner of income tax so they will manage the resolution mechanism so this is very important initiative to revive the growth cycle because if the company is in the dispute or a person is in the dispute it impact their overall growth and business cycle let us see more important provisions related to this important bill the amount payable for resolution will be decided on the basis of either the dispute is related to payment of tax or the payment of interest or penalty or fee accordingly it will be decided the companies or the individual has to pay to the authority or they will be completely waived off some immunity has been guaranteed to appellant under this bill if this resolution is done after that the case will not be reopened under any income tax law or any law under indian authority so this is the immunity that has been guaranteed to the appellant the resolution mechanism will not cover the following dispute the first is the prosecution has been initiated before the declaration is filed or the case involves a person who have been convicted or being prosecuted for offense under any law also it is not involving 
the undisclosed foreign income or the asset so these things are not covered under this resolution mechanism keep this important point in your mind it can be asked in the examination which of the following is not covered under the direct tax benefit vivaad se biswas bill 2020 so these things are not covered you must remember these important points the next news is about farmer producer organization fpos recently our prime minister narendra modi has launched 10000 fpos all over the country at an event organized at chitrakoot these fpos will help to increase the farmer incomes and it will empower them it will help in collectivism of efforts of the farmer and they can sell their product at a better price it will mostly help the small and marginal farmer because they don't have access to technology quality seeds and fertilizers these producer groups will help them to access these things the government has decided to give some incentives to the fpos and basic basic focus will be on aspirational districts so at least one fpos will be formed in every block of the india and they will be given 15 lakh fund to develop their organization so this is very important initiative to boost the farmer incomes and their overall lifestyle the next news is about company's second amendment bill 2019 The Union Cabinet has approved the Companies Second Amendment Bill 2019 to amend the Companies Act 2013. So basically, this amendment bill will amend the Companies Act, and this amendment will remove the criminality clause from the Act if some defaults are not impacting the larger public. It will be not considered as the criminal offence. it will overall enhance the business sentiment and businessman can do business in a free manner rather than by burden ki they will be called as a criminal and it will also lead to declogging of criminal justice system in our justice system there are many cases pending and if we can avoid this kind of unnecessary cases it will help them to become more efficient this is the second amendment and the first amendment of the companies act happened in 2015 that time it removed many clause to become the companies are more effective those clause were impacting the companies act to be more efficient so those clause were removed during the first amendment and during the second amendment the criminality clause will be removed so this is very important for the business sentiment the next news is about pmg portal project monitoring group portal Recently commerce and industry ministry reviewed 17 large size infrastructure projects through the project monitoring group portal it is an institutional mechanism of department of promotion of industry and internal trade basically it expedite the resolution issues and related to any policy issues if the project is stuck due to any policies it takes care of those kind of project but the project cost should be more than 500 crores so basically it takes care of the projects their value or their cost is more than 500 crore and invest india provides the implementation support to pmg it identify the projects and issues related to that this portal takes care of the project related to public private or public private partnership projects and it resolve their issues in a faster manner so this portal is very important for overall infrastructure growth the next news is about virtual currency recently supreme court of india has lift a ban that was imposed by reserve bank of india on banks and financial institution for dealing with virtual currency holders and exchanges the court said that this ban did not pass the proportionality test basically there has been right given under article 191g right to practice any profession if any government or government authorities any banning any business and any business practices it should pass a test under this article if it is not passing a test then that ban will be lifted by the court in 2018 reserve bank of india banned a dealing with virtual currency exchange and individual holders on the ground that these currency had no underlying fiat 
and it was necessary in the larger public interest to stop banks from providing any service related to these but now the supreme court has lifted that circular and they have removed the ban so it will impact the overall virtual currency business in india and we will be dealing with in more virtual currencies the next news is about fdi in air india recently union cabinet has decided to allow nris non resident india who are indian national to own up to 100% stake in air india the foreign direct investment policy would be amended to allow the nris and they can now own up to 100% of air india under automatic route so this is also very important government is trying to sell the air india from the long time but they are not successful yet that's why they have introducing the this new fdi formula the next news is about ecom fest recently one week exhibition com fair ecom fest is being organized by national handicapped finance development corporation in new delhi from 2nd march 2020 this fest is an effort to promote entrepreneurship and knowledge among the bank community the ecom stands for entrepreneurship knowledge awareness and marketing it help in generating awareness among society about the person with disabilities entrepreneurship potential because a uh, the bank community can have lots of artistic ability and it can be translated in the form of entrepreneurship this fest will help artisan from all over the country and they have been invited for their vibrant products they can showcase their products related to handicraft handlooms embroideries work and dry fruits hope you have enjoyed the video if you have enjoyed the video like share and comment and subscribe to educare247 thank you and happy learning